So I was thinking what kind of different, unusual monitoring scenarios I could share with you, because as I said also previously in the previous videos, the monitoring is not necessarily only about gathering some data from your Linux servers, Windows, Windows machines, databases, network gear, applications, or whatever. It can be a lot of other things that normally in our daily basis, we don't even imagine that it can be monitored and the there could be some value added to it. So I was thinking about the topic of this video and I've decided to comment a little bit on this blog, which actually was made by me two or three years ago. I don't really remember. I also had a presentation about it uh, in, in some conference in Germany. <clears throat> and overall, it was just uh, a quite interesting research and in R&D, whether or not it is possible. And the result was that it is um, not very commonly and sure there are some downsides and whatever, but uh, let me expand a bit. So the topic itself is the monitoring software for automotive monitoring. So vehicles, fleet, cars, whatever, monitoring your car. Let's talk about it. And just to understand, like all of you who have cars probably at some point have seen all the crazy lights in a dashboard, right? Sometimes they're like yellow. When those are red, then you usually are worried a bit more. And uh, obviously each of them means something else, right? And uh, if you are somehow into the cars and do understand what is going on then very likely you also have some sort of diagnostic tool yourself at your home so you can just plug it in into your car read the error codes and and understand whether or not you can fix it yourself or perhaps it's time for maintenance and so on and so on and uh, how all of that is happening well every car has the ecu um engine control unit yeah and some of them even have uh, uh, more than one there are also control units for all sort of different systems as example the uh, climate control in the car has a separate unit and so on but story is about something else so all of those control units essentially are connected to some sensors that cars have right like coolant temperature sensor t-map uh, throttle position sensor throttle body air control valve, ignition coil, um, gas cleaner, no, not that, that is just what you're using, uh, camshaft position sensor, and a lot, a lot, a lot. And the more modern car you have, the more there are the sensors, and also the more all sort of different errors you might have, uh, which brings uh, in, in the whole picture also the Zabbix. So, I don't know, personally, like, I don't really know any car that doesn't have this, which is the OBD2 uh, socket, which is the main socket in the car where you need to plug in with your diagnostic computer to actually read what is happening with your car. And that read will contain both um, information about all the current error messages and also the live reading data like... Uh, let's say RPM or the pressure from your turbocharger and uh, temperature of the coolant, um, temperature of the engine and, and stuff like that, right? So all of that can be uh, gathered from the ECU. And that is done using the ELM327 to gather the data. Precisely OBD2 will help us to gather all the information from the vehicle to further transfer it to our Zabbix monitoring system. Initially, this may yet sound very unclear because we have some kind of socket to access our ECU, but how can we actually gather some meaningful data for that? We will need ELM327. And that basically is... Uh, is a program microcontroller produced by ELM Electronic for translating the OBD interface. Like, it's not a huge deal to read from the OBD, but uh, obviously you are not getting like uh, the real text data with with some uh, meaningful text. Your car is broken and stuff like that. You get a lot of a lot of data, a lot of information which we need to translate, and that is exactly what those. Uh, diagnostic computers and systems are doing, um, like uh, the VACOM, uh, VCDS, uh, Delphi. Um, if, if you go to some maintenance repair shop, those usually have the more like uh, 
vendor oriented uh, systems. I forgot what it was for BMW, L, L, something like that. So uh, there are a wide range of all of those systems, but essentially they do quite the same thing. And yes, some, some systems, some softwares can do what others cannot, but for the generic stuff, like uh, just getting information about the error messages and reading some uh, live data, basically everything that is uh, equipped with ELM327 will be enough. And uh, so what we know at this point, like, okay, we have ECU unit in every car, in yours as well. Then we have OBD2 socket, which is used to uh, connect to your car and actually read that information. And in the end, we want to gather everything inside a Zabbix. So the big question is, uh, what can we actually uh, put in between, in between a Zabbix and in between our car? And... Uh, the answer is, I don't remember whether it was here or not, I will show you, uh, give me a second, um, amazon.com, I will open it here. I cannot type. There we go. So if you put in Amazon ELM327, you will find a lot of cheap uh, Chinese diagnostic um, systems. These are the ones that will that you will connect to the OBD2. And on the other hand, you will have like USB as in this case, or it might also be powered uh, by the Bluetooth. So you can connect your computer or phone or, or whatever to uh, receive information. And uh, these are really, really cheap. And I will post the link as well in the description so you can grab one for you. Um, it will work on majority of the cars, but again, not 100%. There's definitely going to be some cars uh, that will not support to receive uh, everything. Um, so when we know that, okay, what we'll plug here, then obviously we need to put Zabbix somewhere, right? We cannot just put it in, in the glove department. So I personally use the Raspberry Pi. And how it works, so you have your ELM327 unit plugged into OBD2 and connected to the Raspberry Pi, which doesn't have any problem problems to have Zabbix on it. You can go to the Zabbix.com, get Zabbix, Zabbix packages, and here you'll find the Raspberry Pi operating system and you can choose whatever you want. I would not recommend to have a server in the car. Uh, first of all, it's going to be a bit more resource intensive on the Raspberry Pi itself. And the second thing is, well, I guess it depends because for this, the main logic of this article was not to monitor your private car, but to monitor the fleet of the car. So let's say if you have a company of uh, cabs or, or public buses and transportation, uh, you are pretty much... Uh, interested and responsible that all all of your fleet is in a good shape uh, without any dangerous uh, problems with your cars and everything is fine so um, how it usually happens the, the old way is that uh, in let's say the the garage and and the place where you drop off all of your cabs and, and stuff like that there is someone to whom you report like what is happening with a car and sometimes you forget and sometimes they forget to forward that to to the maintenance guys who would obviously fix that so with the system you can have all of your fleet monitored by the zabbix automatically and uh, yeah so all of the problems with all of the cars could potentially be reported on the dashboards uh, on the fly and uh, that's why i would personally suggest to use a proxies on the on the cars so each car has a proxy each proxy means one car which is connected to elm327 which is connected to obd2 and which is constantly in a live stream scanning the vehicle for the error codes and we can also set up the monitoring for uh, live readings as example speed because if you own some vehicle company like again taxis or whatever you probably don't want your uh, drivers to speed and 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 break the law and do all of that stuff so that can be monitored as well and additional advantage was that 
since we're using uh, Raspberry Pi, it's also very simple to uh, collect information about the GPS location, which is also something you might be very much interested because, well, um, remember in the Zabbix you have a GPS uh, geomaps, so basically a map in your dashboard on which if you are doing this, you will have no problems to visualize in which in which cities or streets your your vehicle is actually located and again all of that is coming through the Zabbix. so collecting the current latitude and longitude here is the snapshot from the uh, script that i was using so what we are gathering from the vehicle at that time i think it was a bmw bmw e60 uh, so we're getting um, 02, okay, RPM, speed, intake, pressure, coolant, temperature, uh, math, so intake, air, amount of the air, control model, voltage, throttle position, catalyst, temperature, uh, timing advance, um, intake, pressure, and, and so on and so on. So this is all the information that we're getting. And yes, it was required to have the Python script, which actually does a lot of the data processing to show in the Zabbix something meaningful so as a result we're getting this which is already meaningful and in a Zabbix itself the only thing that we need to do is just create uh, dependent items and use the pre-processing steps so here I was doing the regular expression to extract what I am looking for and in the result uh, let me try to zoom it in uh, as a result, you can get all of that stuff into your Zabbix in the latest data in the dashboards. And obviously you can set up the triggers and so on and so on. So many use cases of collected data, as I said, like it can be a private stuff. Uh, it can be for your company. It can be for your kids. If you want to be a bit more in the control, what the hell they are doing with, with a car and uh, where they are and if they are speeding. And uh, the biggest fact is, again, I'm... I didn't invent anything new and I didn't really want to reinvent the bicycle. There already are solutions and the softwares in the market, in a world that are basically doing this, what, what, what I'm saying right now, right? But uh, those cost quite a lot of money. And if you plan to onboard like multiple vehicles, let's say 100, it will cost you a lot of money. But costs and expenses on this on my R&D was like Raspberry Pi costs you like I don't know how much it costs nowadays back then I just had one at home at probably something like fixed 50 or 60 dollars uh, ELM is uh, you can definitely get it under 20 dollars and uh, that's it well uh, you probably want to have an internet right to uh, transfer the data uh, from from your car from your proxy to the Zabbix server so uh, that's some um, dependency for all of this project you must ensure that the car has uh, internet there are multiple ways how you can do that uh, either you can again use the sim card in your raspberry pi or perhaps you can have just uh, mobile internet uh, in your car and connect the raspberry pi to it so there are all sort of different ways uh, how you can do that and 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 with what tools and overall it was pretty interesting if you are into something of these stuff i would recommend you to try it out i was also thinking about the monitoring of uh, tesla which is uh, less about monitoring the mechanical car and more about monitoring the computer because api is there but uh, as far as i remember from my research not like it would be really uh, publicly available so there are some complication complications but yet um it's pretty much possible so thank you guys for staying here for for 14 14 minutes i hope you learned something new i hope, hope you got some ideas for your projects and uh don't forget to subscribe and, and smash that like button to support these videos. Uh, by the way, um, there is a script, as I said, and uh, in my Patreon page, I think the post was available for free. Uh, you can find also the, the article from two years ago, which also includes the, the dummy script for... Uh, yeah, the dummy script, which you can just play around and then see how it works without actually connecting the car, which simulates the ECU of the car. So other than that, thanks you for watching and uh, see you guys later. Bye bye.